good day. This is Jeff. I'd like to welcome you to the doghouse. Today we're going to go ahead and start the second part of a three-part series in Woodworking 101. And we're going to talk about corded power tools. I'm going to lay out some suggestions from my experience to help guide you in what tools you should get right up front. Now keep in mind this is not an end-all either. Now, you're going to hear me uh, in the next couple of videos talk about buying the best quality that you can afford. I'm not saying it's okay to go cheap. I understand you may not have a great deal of money to spend $300 in a drill, but you want to get the best that you can afford or what you have available. So we look forward to all that and we're going to lay it out. Now let's go ahead and get started on these tools. Alright, real quick before we get into the actual corded power tools, I want to talk about the accessories you need to buy along with your tools real quick. These are real simple uh, things you're going to need. Not an end all, and as you progress in your woodworking, buy the tools and drill bits and sandpaper that you need. That way you can figure out what works best for you and what doesn't. Just don't go out and buy a bunch of stuff you think you might need and it ends up just uh, laying in the shop somewhere and you don't use it. Alright, next thing we're going to get into is drill bits. It uh, pays to go ahead and just buy a full set, get a good quality. Drill bits can come in a variety of sizes within your set, and you can buy them individually. And some sets come with like 7 bits, some will come with 20. Uh, this is something you need to invest in right up front. Go to get a good set that covers a majority of the sizes. Real important, good quality. Next thing I want to talk about is your drivers. These are important here too for driving in your screws or fasteners many different types uh, this one here is one of them high speed low drag ones where you can take it and rotate it drill your hole unhook it turn around you have your fillet tip go ahead and drive your fastener or your screw uh, what's nice about this you don't have to switch back and forth between uh, these two here saves you a lot of time next thing you would definitely need is a countersink with a bit as you can see there's a couple different types Real important you have these right up front, especially when you're working near the end of the board. If you don't pre-drill and pre-countersink, uh, get real frustrated, start splitting a lot of lumber. Uh, you don't want that to happen. All right, next thing we're going to move on to is saw blades for like a jigsaw. As you can see, they come in a variety of sizes, types, widths, lengths. The most important thing is the amount of teeth. Usually these are referred to as the amount of teeth per inch. The more teeth you have per inch, the smoother the cut. The less teeth, the rougher the cut. So what I'm saying here is if you kick uh, cutting thick material, uh, like a 2x4, you want one uh, for a rough cut. Um, somewhere in the middle, uh, kind of universal blade, then one with fine teeth. Remember, more teeth, smoother the cut. Um, I always try to go smooth as I can. I don't like sanding. It's not my thing. Now let's talk about a circular shaped uh, blade here. Now same thing. You need to buy it so make sure you know what tool you're buying it for and it fits. Here you got 24 teeth for the diameter of the blade. This is kind of a universal cut type blade. Again if you're cutting uh, thin plywood or paneling you're going to get one that has more teeth per uh, blade and if you're cutting uh, scrap wood uh, you probably want to go with something a little less always read the label it'll tell you everything you need to know about this blade on the packaging diameter thickness of the blade of the kerth what it's designed to cut and what it's not designed to cut so always keep that in mind it's important you know what you're getting ready to do and what you're going to cut all right next thing now we're going to talk about sandpaper when you go ahead and purchase sandpaper, right up front until you get a good feel of what you're comfortable with, uh, buy your variety packs. So when you're buying something for your little triangle sander, you can buy a pack that'll have like five of each grit, usually three grits in it. And the grit is the uh, roughness of the sandpaper. The rougher the sandpaper, the more wood it takes off, the uh, less grit or smoother grit. Uh, does your fine sanding for staining. Always make sure, just like everything else, 
that you know what you're buying for. That uh, when you buy these types of sandpaper, that it fits your tool. Um, don't hesitate to take a picture of the tool. So when you go to the store, if you can't recall it, you can look it up on your phone. You know exactly what you're buying for. Along with the sandpaper, as well as your sanding disc. There's many different types, so make sure you're buying the right type. Same thing, you can buy these in packages where you can get 10 or 15 of the same grit, or you can get a variety of pack of different grits. After a while, you work with wood, you get a good feel of knowing what you're going to do, what grit you're going to need. Again, make sure it fits your tool. This one here's got cloth on the back for uh, hook and loop. Some of them have adhesive on the back to, to stick in there. Okay? Real simple. Another thing is a handy thing to talk about is sanding blocks. These have many different uses. Uh, can help out in a lot of different areas. Uh, did I tell you I don't like sanding? Uh, so if I find something that works good, cuts down an amount of work, gives me a good clean surface for staining and painting, I probably got it. There we go. Now, always need full sheets of sandpaper around your shop. They're constantly coming in handy. Once again, it's like the other sandpaper. You can buy it in uh, packages. They can come in just one grit. You can get a variety of pack. But after you work with wood for a while, just like before, you'll know what you need to get and what to buy. And again, always look on the package. It'll tell you what that sandpaper is designed to sand for. Wood, metal, uh, and soft wood, hard wood. Again, read the package. It'll help you out a lot. We're not going to spend four hours explaining what sandpaper you can use on what. Okay, now that pretty much does it for our accessories. Alright, first thing we're going to talk about in corded power tools is the circular saw. Starting out is probably going to be uh, your most used, probably most important power tool that you're going to have. Alright, first thing we want to start out with when it comes to selecting a circular saw is you want to get a standard size, which is a seven and a quarter inch blade. Why I say that is because you can get so many different types of blades uh, for different type of cutting. Okay. Now I bought this particular circular saw back in about 1982-83. It was a far reach on the budget. I got it. You can't find anything like it anymore. Hefty, strong, powerful, and it still runs great to this day. Okay. Now, also you want to make sure you have on your uh, circular saw is what they call automatic return on your guard. Where it does just that. When you're cutting wood and when you pull it off the wood, the guard comes down and protects the blade. Real good safety feature. Next thing you want to check is make sure you've got a good heavy duty platform that you run your saw on. The ones that are narrow uh, become unstable when you're cutting wood and you start getting different uh, pitches and angles on your wood where you don't want them good base good solid base next thing you want you want to be able to adjust the height of the blade so if you're cutting quarter inch uh, for safety reasons you don't want to cut two inches the blade stick out two inches on the other side you want to be able to depth or adjust your depth on it make sure you have that feature on there next one is your compound uh, adjustment where you can actually cut on different angles by adjusting your fence on here. Very important. These type of uh, features on there, you want them right up front. I found out not having a table saw when I first got in, I got very skilled in using a circular saw where I was making cuts uh, that you could do on a table saw. I uh, got, uh, like I say, very proficient in it and that had carried over for many years on that there. All right. Next tool we want to talk about is a jigsaw. Same thing, you want it with a cord. What you would like, the best thing on your uh, jigsaw is variable speed. Like I always said, a good solid platform. Good wide, made out of heavy metal. Um, and so when you set it down, it's not wandering or the blade is not cutting in and out. If possible, you also want to get the adjustment where on the cut of the braid it oscillates. It sends the blade forward and you get a better, cleaner cut. Most of your jigsaws just saw straight up and down. This here you can adjust 
so it cuts forward and down at the same time. Real handy when you're cutting very thick material or very hard material. Make sure it's got a good cord and take a look at how the blade secures in there. You want at least two lugs that hold the blade in. If you pick up a cheap uh, jigsaw, compare them side by side between a name brand and a cheap one and see how the blade in here. And this one here has also got a bearing that the blade rides on. So your blade's not jumping around or anything. Real good features on these, real important. This is going to be one of your go-to uh, saws when you first start out. Make sure you invest right up front, get all the features on it you can. Make sure it's good, heavy duty. Again, you put a cheap tool in your hand, you know it's cheap. Put a good quality one, you know it's quality. That's what you want to look for, it's good quality. Next thing is the sander. Many different types out there. I recommend to start out with is your circular or round, your four ounce or four inch, five inch, five and a half inch. Doesn't really matter starting out on the diameter. These type here osculate and rotate at the same time. Okay, so what does that mean is one, it takes down a quite a bit of uh, wood at once or quickly, and it doesn't leave sanding marks in the wood. So when you go to stain it, you see where the sandpaper is scrubbed it back and forth. This here, it works real well in not doing that. On off switch, dust collector, good cord, pick it up, feels good, feels good in your hand. Hey, good tool, okay? Next thing is a small detail sander, especially when you start getting into refinishing things, not so much building. But uh, refinishing some furniture in your house or an heirloom or some antiques. Something small you can get in the corners while you're sanding. So if you only got a height you can get in there, you can get in there where you can't with the bigger sanders. These are very handy. They've got a thousand purposes. Um, again, once you use one of these uh, in certain areas, you'll wonder why you haven't had one up to that point. Good quality, good name brand. You need to get one. Next thing here is a corded drill. It's like, hey, I'm going to buy me a cordless drill. I won't need one of these. Uh, trust me on this. You'll need one. Keep in mind, when you're using battery-operated tools, charge only lasts so long. The charge is based off on how much torque you're putting on the tool. Less torque or pressure or work on the tool, the longer the battery lasts. When you start drilling into metal, hardwood, or start grinding a lot, one thing is the battery doesn't last as long on a charge and you're wearing the battery out. Remember, you only have so many charges in a battery, maybe a thousand or maybe two thousand. But as you put torque and bear down on things and drain that battery quickly, now you shorten the life of the battery. So when you're around the shop or in your garage and you have access to uh, a cord or electricity, you want to use this whenever you can. And any heavy duty objects, cutting into metal, uh, thick wood, using a spade bit, uh, them type of things. All right, now, again, this is not a end all here on tools. This is what I recommend you start out with. You might feel you don't need all these. You might think, hey, I need a belt sander as well. Hey, absolutely. But You'd be surprised at what you can build uh, and repair around your home just with these uh, tools right here. Uh, I want to thank you for viewing this uh, videotape on corded power tools. Next video coming up is going to be the 3 of 3, which is going to be cordless power tools. So I look forward to seeing you soon. Please, uh, don't hesitate to comment. Love seeing your comments. And we'll see you soon. This is Jeff from the Doghouse.